How can you tell humans from AI? The platform WorldCoin aims at creating digital passports that verify you as a real human by scanning your eyes. Is this a good idea? Actors and writers are scared to get replaced by AI. But is the technology even good enough yet? And from big data-driven diagnostics to personalized therapy, will AI revolutionize medicine? These are the topics that have moved the tech world. Are you sure I'm human? You can't be really. In the age of lifelike AI chatbots and deceptive deepfakes, how can we distinguish between real and fake? Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT, wants to offer a solution, scan people's eyeballs. The biometric data of each iris is unique and can be used to clearly distinguish between people. And no, this is not a new Black Mirror episode. It's Altman's latest venture, WorldCoin. The project combines the crypto token WLD and the digital passport WorldID, which aims to verify you're a real human and not an AI bot. Both are managed through the World app. The project was publicly launched in July in different cities around the world. Since the testing phase began in May 2021, WorldCoin signed up more than 2 million users across 35 countries and one planet. According to the company, most people that have signed up are from Europe, India and Southern Africa. The World app aims to be easily accessible using little mobile data and smartphone capacities. Altman says he wants to enable people to ID themselves for services who weren't able to so far. The procedure of getting verified is free. You even get some WLD tokens for it. Sounds good? Well, you pay with a scan of your eyeballs. How WorldCoin wants to verify your human. To get your eyeballs scanned, you need to go to a WorldCoin operator. You can find them via the World app or on their website. On site, the operator will scan your eye using the orb, an imaging device that scans your iris. This takes about 10 seconds. The AI system will analyze your iris to confirm you're human. Then a unique iris code is created. This is checked against WorldCoin's database to ensure it's the first time you've signed up. After that, you receive your World ID in your app. According to WorldCoin, images of your eye are stored locally on the orb and deleted after the created code has been added to the database. And the code cannot be converted back into your biometrical data. All right, now we've got our passport, but what is it good for? How to use World ID. Services like World ID could be used anytime you need to prove your identity. Think of payment or crypto services, for example. Verifying the person you're interacting with is actually human reduces the risk of AI-driven fraud. It could also be used in voting systems to ensure one person gets one vote. Or for verification on social media sites. If only humans can sign up, bots will have it much harder. Discord, for example, already integrated World ID, saying they want to prevent spam and increase the quality of the community by verifying humans. The dark side of WorldCoin. Privacy experts warn that sensitive biometrical data might end up in the wrong hands, even though WorldCoin says no such data is stored. But fraud is still possible. Reports claim China has a black market for already verified World IDs. That is because WorldCoin's verification service is not available in China as of now. The IDs are supposedly sold on social media and e-commerce sites and often come from other countries like Cambodia or Kenya. WorldCoin said it only identified a few hundred fraudulent world IDs. The company is also criticized for alleged exploitative practices. To train their AI system to recognize irises and create the code, the company needed large amounts of training data. They collected most of that in villages in developing countries. WorldCoin operators were showing up at markets, urban centers or metro stops for one or two days and collected biometrical data. And according to the MIT Technology Review, the company's representatives used deceptive marketing practices, collected more personal data than it acknowledged and failed to obtain meaningful informed consent. In return, the operators supposedly offered everything from free cash to airports. Experts say that stronger data protection laws in Europe and the US keep AI developers from getting all the training data they need. So they turn to the Global South instead. 
What do you think about these tactics and would you get a world ID? Let us know. How will AI change the entertainment industry? Can I see my favorite actor in any movie I want? No more impatiently waiting for new releases. Will AI rule or ruin the movies? Imagine putting Tom Cruise's or Shah Rukh Khan's face in any film you like. It's possible with the help of AI. But Hollywood actors also warn it could be an existential threat. It's one of the reasons why they went on strike in summer 2023. But how good is AI really? And what does it mean for us users when actors and writers get replaced by AI? Can AI replace actors? This is the real Harrison Ford in the latest Indiana Jones movie. And this is him, 45 years younger, in the same movie, courtesy of AI. It shocks viewers sometimes, but de-aging famous actors in blockbuster movies has become part of the day-to-day -day business in Hollywood. Remember the young Princess Leia's face in the Star Wars movie Rogue One in 2016? For the new Indiana Jones movie, Ford's face was recorded with motion capture software. Then his face got de-aged. Machine learning helped to analyze years of footage of Ford. Imagine the future. Actors could live on screen and appear in new movies forever. That's what the actors on strike criticize. They say studios plan that background performers should be able to be scanned, get paid for one day's pay, and their company should own that scan and should be able to use it for the rest of eternity in any project they want, with no consent and no compensation. Payment for one day, performing forever? Do you think that's fair? Scripts, images, voices, music, AI does it all. Generative AI can take over a lot more tasks. ChatGPT can write a script. Right now, it might not be very creative or even any good, but that's just a matter of time. Midjourney and Dolly can create stunning images when prompted right. Merv can clone voices and Amper Music helps compose tunes. How AI replicating faces and voices affects you. In the US, actors and screenwriters demand regulation for the use of AI in entertainment. For example, they want to ban AI-written scripts as source material for movies. Actors are not categorically against the use of AI, but they want to be adequately compensated when their faces and voices are reused. What's worrying them could also affect you. The question is really, do we own the right to our own image and voice? How can you benefit from creative AI? Hyperpersonalization is the buzzword here. AI can help give you the exact product you want. It can put your favorite star in your own personalized movie ad. And if you're watching dub movies, you might soon hear AI-generated dubbing voices. Companies claim they could, for example, replicate Morgan Freeman's voice to speak perfect Spanish. So, do you think AI will rule or ruin the movies? Imagine you're sick. Who would you trust when it comes to your diagnostics and therapy? A human doctor or artificial intelligence? AI is expected to revolutionize the field of medicine. It can already sift through huge amounts of x-rays and analyze massive data sets to find the best therapy for an individual patient. So, will AI someday replace doctors? Personalized medicine. AI systems can help with a more accurate diagnosis. That's due to AI's ability to analyze huge amounts of data in the blink of an eye. Just one example. An AI can quickly compare MRI scans of any patient with others in a huge database and spot early signs of cancer or Alzheimer's. This quality makes AI a powerful tool for detecting and treating rare diseases as well. Plus, AI can generate individualized treatment plans for you and help you recover faster by analyzing all of your health data and comparing it to other cases. But also human doctors have their benefits. An individual doctor draws on their training and experience and hopefully looks at the patient with a holistic approach. That means he or she would take many factors into account. AI can only see what it's been trained to see. It's very precise and quick on that aspect, but might overlook others. But it's not about deciding between AI or doctor, of course. The question is rather, when does every doctor get to benefit from AI's assistance? So, what do we need to get started? Digital twins. Medical AI systems need a lot of data. 
and the more, the better. Because artificial intelligence is trained to recognize patterns by using process data sets. Your biometric data is also needed. By assembling information from your medical record, your smartphone or health gadgets, AI can create a digital twin of you. Such a virtual doppelganger can not only get you a perfectly tailored individual treatment, it could also be used for developing new drugs. Drugs could be tested on digital twins before starting expensive human trials. It would be cheaper, quicker and safer. Today it takes an average of 10 years and billions of euros to develop a new drug. Using AI to predict how potential drugs behave in the body could really cut down on the time and money needed. Dead-end compounds could be identified and discarded right away. There's a wide range for possible applications for AI in the health sector. But when will it be widely used? Which obstacles have to be overcome? Well, there are some obstacles. Data security is a big issue. Your medical record contains very sensitive private information and could be misused if it falls into the wrong hands. Also, keep in mind that data fed into an AI system can't just be erased. An AI learns from the input you give it. It's not a simple database that lets you delete specific entries. Just like you can't erase a memory from your brain, data fed to an AI system stays in there. And then there's ethical implications. Medical data sets need to be put together in a truly representative way. AI only learns with the data it is fed. For example, in case women were underrepresented in the training data, a diagnosis could be less accurate for them than for men. It could even be wrong. This gender gap has a long history in medicine. Drug trials were often conducted only on men, even though the same drugs were prescribed to women. This led to ineffective treatment for them. Drawing on that biased data to train AIs runs the danger of replicating the issue. Plus, who is liable if the AI suggests a wrong diagnosis or treatment? Is it the doctor who used it or the company who deployed the AI system? Legal questions like that still need to be answered. I think it needs to be us humans taking control and responsibility. But AI can be of great help. What's your view on AI in medicine? Are you optimistic about its potential? Or would you rather rely on your human doctor? That's all from me today. Which topics would you like us to cover next? Let us know. Bye and see you soon.